Hey everybody, this is Mr. Finale. And welcome to our third lecture today, where molecular polarity means a positive and a negative end is determined by two things. So we are really, really, really hopping right into um, molecular polarity. I think this is kind of short, but it really requires us to be good at drawing shapes and understanding shapes. Okay, so molecular polarity means a molecule has a positive and a negative end that's determined by two things. Bond polarity. We find bond polarity by subtracting the electronegativity values. If the difference is 0 0.41 or more, the bond is polar. Um, and I just want to emphasize this. Um, ionic is very polar. So sometimes people get all upset about, well, if it's 2.0 or whatever, as long as it's over 0 0.41, it's polar. Okay. Greater electronegativity value, so this is EN. Whoops, EN. Oh, I'm going to erase that and try to write the letter N again. Greater electronegativity value um, is negative, and you'll show this by delta negative or point an arrow at them. Okay? So that's not enough. Okay? So to graduate, oh, let's see here. What's, what's a good one? Okay. So we'll say to date Xavier. Xavier has two requirements to date somebody. They have to be alive and they have to be human. Now, it has to be both alive and human. Xavier does not want to date anyone who is a dead human. And Xavier will not date a living uh, squirrel, right? So it's got to be both. This has to be both. What if it's just one? One is not enough. One is uh, nonpolar. Okay. So, an asymmetrical shape. This is, so in geometry, we talked about symmetry a little bit. Not we, but your geometry teacher did. Um, so, an asymmetrical shape has an imbalance. So, this imbalance of asymmetry allows for a positive and a negative end. So let's define asymmetry, and this isn't really identifying, this isn't defining it, it's identifying it. You have different outer atoms. That means they would be not the same. Pairs of electrons. Uh, that means the outside part would be not the same. Now, I want to warn you. Um, you can have pairs of electrons and have it be polar still. Um, so the pairs of electrons often, but not always, cause asymmetry. Um, if you look at it and see it's imbalanced, and then I'll show you the circle trick. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do for each of these, well, first I'm going to grab myself a periodic table. So on your Professor Mokur's periodic table, you can look at these bonds pretty quickly too. So I'm going to look at Cl and Cl's 3.16 and phosphorus is 2.4. One nine, and that's going to be. Um, I don't want to do the subtraction, but it's definitely going to be polar because it's going to be bigger than 0 0.41. Okay, so it meets the first one. Polar bond, check. Now, is this symmetrical or asymmetrical? Okay, so a couple of things. Here's just to show you no pairs. All right, I don't have a lone pair here, right? That's not there. That's not there. Where's my eraser so I can erase it? That's not there. So no pairs leads you to believe nonpolar. So NP, NP, okay? Um, we'll do the circle trick, okay? I'm going to circle the outer electrons in a tight circle. Okay, circle trick is tight circle of outer atoms. If central atom is outside, it is asymmetrical. Okay. At all outside or which at all outside or not middle-ish. Okay. You see the piece in the middle of that? Right? So circle check says symmetrical. 
And when you look at it, right, doesn't it look balanced? So that's it. So this is a nonpolar molecule. Even though it has polar bonds, right? Just like before, this would be just like Xavier. It's alive. Okay, so if I found myself a living um, deer, Xavier won't date it because it's not both polar bonds and polar shape. It's a nonpolar molecule because of symmetry. Okay, let's look at this guy. Okay, so looking right here, let's look at the polarity of the bonds. Okay, so xenon, I see xenon to oxygen. Well, so xenon to oxygen is 2.6. Well, let's do xenon to oxygen. Let's do this a little more consistently. Xenon is 2.6. Oxygen is 3.44. Looking at that, that's going to be polar. I know it's going to be more than 0.41, right? And then I also have xenon to F. Xenon is still 2.6. F is 3.98. That's also going to be polar. So I've got polar bonds. That's good news, right? But let's look up here at the things we can check. Different outer atoms. See how this is different? Right? That's an asymmetrical shape. So I have a polar bond and asymmetrical. That means this is a polar molecule. Okay. Um, I could also use the asymmetrical test. See that lone pair? Pairs make it polar, right? So there you go. Let's look at CCL3 or CHCL3. Okay, so let's look at the C to H bond. C and H. Carbon is 2.55. Hydrogen is 2.20. That's 0.35. That is a nonpolar bond. Uh oh. So right now that's not doing much for me. And then we've got to do C to CL. C is still 2.55. Oops, that's a 2. And chlorine is 3.16. And if I subtract those two, that's going to be polar. It's going to be more than 0.41, right? So now here, um, I've got some polar bonds, right? But notice again, we have our different outer atoms. Different outer atoms means it's going to, so I have some polar bonds. So this is a polar molecule because it has one polar bonds. They don't all have to be polar. I need just one of them. And it is asymmetrical. Okay. All right. CF4. We Did we do C to F already? No, we didn't. So let's look at this one. C is still 2.55. F is 3.98. If I subtract those, it's greater than... Uh, 0.41, so it's going to be polar. Okay. So I got polar bonds. Now the shape. Okay. So let's take a look at our shape thing again. Different outer atoms. Nope, they're all Fs. Pairs of electrons. No pairs. Imbalance. It looks pretty balanced to me. And it is, right? See, that's an even balance. And then circle trick. Let's try our circle trick. Circle it tight. Okay, so it has polar bonds, but it is a symmetrical shape. So it is a non-polar CF4. Okay? Okay. Let's look at H2O. Um, o to H. O is 3.44. H is 2.20. Subtract those, I get 1.24, which is polar. So I have polar bonds. What about the shape? Okay. Again, to check this. Different outer atoms. No, that's that doesn't work. Um, pairs of electrons. I have pairs, right? So those pairs, 
say that I'm going to have an asymmetrical shape. So if I have one polar bonds and two an asymmetrical shape, that means H2O is a polar molecule. Oh, I put molecules, but that's okay. All right, next one, SF6. S is, periodic table tells me, 2.58. F is 3.98. And if you haven't noticed, remember, this is an absolute value thing, right? So this is going to be polar because it's more than 0.41, okay? So then if I've got this dude is polar, I have polar bonds. Hey, that's number one. And number two, let's talk about the, see if it's asymmetrical, right? It's asymmetrical if it has a different outer atom. They're all Fs. It's asymmetrical if it has pairs of electrons on the center. Remember, it's only the central atom. So it is asymmetrical because the central atom has lone pairs. Okay? We can continue with this a little bit. Um, imbalance, that's the eyeball trick and then the circle trick. So if I do the circle thing, do you see how S isn't in the center, right? So it's asymmetrical. So S, F, Oops, that's five. It's not six. One, two, three, two, four. SF4, my bad. SF4 is uh, a polar molecule. All right. Now I'm going to erase this and I'm going to draw some arrows. Okay. So we talked about how we have to be able to put our deltas or point an arrow at it. So I'm going to do that only for my polar molecules. Okay. So remember this guy right here. He was nonpolar, right? So I'm not going to do him. This guy was polar, so let's clear him out a little bit. Okay, so 0.35 was a nonpolar bond, so I don't draw anything. But chlorine, chlorine had a greater electronegativity than carbon. Dink, dink, ding. Dink, dink, ding. Dink, dink, ding. Notice I point at the negative one, at the greater electronegativity, and put my positive thing at the lesser. Okay? If I were to draw polar arrows for this guy, C to F, I'm not going to draw the arrows for this one. I'm going to use the deltas, okay? Just because they're, they're the same thing. I want you to be comfortable with it. Remember, fluorine had a greater ne electronegativity. So I'm going to put a delta negative, whoa, a delta negative here, and a delta positive here, and a delta negative here, and a delta positive here, and a delta negative here, and a delta positive here, and a delta negative here, and a delta positive here. Can you see the center of positivity is here, right? And the center of negativity, when I look at all of these, remember how we said this is a nonpolar molecule, but it has polar bonds? Do you see how my negatives will all cancel out to be in that spot. That's why it cancels out. Okay. So you should be able to draw the arrows. And we drew the arrows, um, I think in the first podcast, um, with one bond at a time. And then this is just looking at how asymmetry, asymmetry keeps, asymmetry keeps your polarity and symmetry will cancel out the polarity. And that's it. And we're done. And I get to say toodles. And I do. Oops, guess that's not going to do it for me. Toodles.